Hey guys, welcome to Coding Flamingo. In the last video we created our SQL database in Azure. In this video we're going to look at how to connect a web app to that SQL database using MSI authentication without any password or secrets, just using what we're developing, using our identity from uh, Visual Studio, and when we're um, on production we're going to use an MSI in Azure. So first we have to install some entity framework uh, Nougat packages. So we're going to start by installing those. So we're going to start with Entity Framework Core. So we're going to do design. Forgot to mention this is just a regular Razor page uh, application like the default that comes with the weather stuff. Um, and then we're going to do SQL Server. and tools. Um, so now that we have that, let's go to startup. In startup, we're gonna add uh, our SQL database um, endpoints. So, oh, and I forgot to add our auth, app auth. We have to also add app authentication. This is for authenticating with MSIs and your Visual Studio. Which reminds me, when we're when you're doing this, make sure that in your Azure Service Authentication, you have um, your Azure Identity set up, so you can use your Azure Identity. So now that we have that one, we're going to go to startup. Uh, first thing we're going to do is add, add it as one of our token providers. So in services, we're going to add this as token providers. We have to add the app auth. And then, oh, we first have to create our First, we're going to create the model. So in this one, we're just going to create a test database, and it's going to be for people. So let's just create a models folder. And in here, we're going to add a new class. And let me just copy it. So in here we tell it that this is going to be the key to our database and then we specify which ones are required, which ones aren't required. So in here we just made occupation and hobbies not required. So now we have to create in data, we're going to add our DB context, so new item. In this one we're just going to call it tutorial DB context. So in here, we're going to add a few things. So first, we're going to have to add um, our DB context. I'm actually just going to grab this. So in here, we're using models for this one. Then we are creating a new connection, which I don't know why it's not biking. Oh, we have to add this one. Sorry, I forgot to add it. This node package as well. So at the end of the day, you have to have the entity framework ones, the uh, system that they have SQL, 
and the app authentication that we packages. Then we have this one saved, and then this one. Uh, sorry, this is our startup. And then in this one, we'll add. So we're using the SQL or models to have our person model. And this is basically how you declare a new table. You tell it what uh, object you're going to use, the name of the table. And then we're using configuration, um, the entity framework core, since that's what we use, and app authentication, that's for our authentication provider, which we it gets passed when this is getting created. Then we use it to get a token. Um, you could actually simplify this. I was debugging some stuff, so you can actually put this here, get rid of this, get rid of that. Um, so basically here on configuration, we pass a connection string and we get a token. So instead of using username and password, we are using a token from uh, Azure. Uh, so it's AAD authentication. So now let's add our connection string. So in here, we're going to, let me just once again copy and paste it. Fun fact, when I was creating this, I had a typo in here, and it took me like an hour to figure out where the typo was. So in here, as you see, I'm just passing the server, the port, and what database, which is the database we created. We called it main database for tutorial last time. Um, so I'm not passing the actual username and password that's done with the authentication token. So now that we have done that, we have to go back to startup. And we're going to add, uh, so we already added the token provider. And the second thing we have to add is the DB context. So this is going to be add DB context and then the context that we created here. So that takes care of that. Then after that, we just have to add the migration. So let's go here, and we're going to do, uh, and let me just show you the database beforehand. So it's, um, let me just drag it here. So if we can see here, this database, we have no tables. And so then we're going to do add migration. name it whatever you want and this is going to build and it's going to create the migration and here we have so you see we're creating a new table that table is going to have the email the first name last name age occupation and hobbies and you can see age is an int and then the primary key uh, is the email so there can only be, like this was just going to be our key, so that each email has to be unique. And so now we're going to do update database. It's using my identity to use that. And if we go back here, and we do refresh, we created two tables. The first one is migration history, so in here it keeps uh, the information of what migrations have been applied. So first migration, and then select people, uh, sorry, and then we can see here we have an empty database. And you see it has all this stuff. So if you want to edit something, like let's say afterwards you realize that you forgot to add something, you can always go here and add a new um, Thing. I don't know, description. And then you create a new migration. And as you can see, it just creates the description. Then we do update database. It adds it. So if we go back here, let me just close this. If we're going to select. Then we're going to, let me just refresh. I don't know if it does.
does it or not. But, so, and then if we go here, we can see that now it adds a description field. And same for deleting it. If we want to delete it, if we want to delete something, it will give you a warning when you're deleting stuff because you might be losing data. So in here we're just going to do delete it. And as you can see, it gives us uh, a warning that we're deleting data. But we're okay with it, so we're going to do update database. And if we go back here, it automatically does it. So now the description is gone. So that's how you connect to Azure databases without a password. And you start the, your MPP framework migration with .NET Core. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.